Take a look at this nested sequence starting at pi over 2. Our job is to figure out whether the sum of this sequence squared converges or diverges. I think this is a very interesting problem from the Putnam exam of last year. To make our lives a little bit easier for the intervals we're going to be looking at, let's just find a sub 1 by plugging in a naught to this recursion. That would be sine of pi over 2, which we know to be 1. The next thing to note about this sequence is that it's both positive and decreasing. If we look at the graph of sine x and x on the same plot, we see that between x equals 0 and 1, our graph of sine is always positive, and the graph of sine is always less than the function y equals x. And just visually, we can verify that x is greater than sine x, which is to say a sub n is greater than sine of a sub n, and we can see that this means our sequence is decreasing. So we have a sub n is both positive and decreasing. We're looking at the sum of a sub n squared, so it really feels like this should be convergent. But not so fast. Let's look at the Taylor series representation for sine x, and we'll restrict our discussion to x being on the interval 0 to 1. Now, that's a lot of terms to work with, an infinite number in fact, so let's cut this off a bit, let's truncate it, just using the first two terms and using the remainder theorem. That theorem says essentially that if we cut off our sum at the third degree term, then we need to add on a remainder, an error term if you will, that is a fourth degree term. So that term would be sine fourth derivative evaluated somewhere in our interval 0 to 1 times x to the fourth over 4 factorial. Fortunately, we know how to take four derivatives of sine x. The first derivative would be cosine, and then negative sine, and then negative cosine, and then positive sine once again. So the fourth derivative of sine x is simply sine x, or in this case sine of c. Something to note, since we're only considering values of c between 0 and 1, and we know sine x is positive on 0 to 1, then that sine term must be positive, 4 factorial is positive, and if we're between 0 and 1, to the 4th power will also be positive. Thus, this entire term is greater than or equal to 0. So we can completely ignore this term via an inequality. What we have when the dust settles is sine x is greater than or equal to x minus x cubed over 3 factorial, so long as we're considering x values between 0 and 1. That was all a bit out of nowhere, considering what we actually wanted to figure out was about the sum of a sub n squared. We want to show whether it's convergent or divergent. One way to show a sum is divergent is to directly compare it to the harmonic series, the sum of 1 over n. If we were to show that our sum was greater than this sum, since the harmonic series diverges to positive infinity, if our sum was greater than that, greater than infinity, well it must be infinity and it must diverge by comparison. Here's our claim. a sub n squared is greater than or equal to 1 over n. This is our comparison to the harmonic series, since we can just take the sum of both sides. Maybe it's a little clunky to work with a sub n squared, and we've been talking about simply a sub n this entire time. Let's just take the square root of both sides, and we'll restrict our discussion to only n greater than or equal to 1. That way we don't have to worry about plus or minuses. Let's prove our claim with mathematical induction. I think about it like laying up a bunch of dominoes, tipping the first domino over, and seeing the rest of the dominoes fall although there are going to be an infinite number of dominoes. It works like this, we need a base case, that's like our first domino, and then we have our induction step, where we need to assume if any domino is tipped over, the next one would fall. Those two facts would ensure that all of our dominoes would tip over, and thus the claim would be proven. So let's lay that first domino, let's make our base case n equals 1. Let's just check that 1 satisfies our inequality a sub 1 is greater than or equal to 1 over the square root of 1. Is this true? Well, a sub 1 was 1, and 1 over the square root of 1 is 1. 1 is greater than or equal to 1, and we have our base case. Here comes the induction step. We assume this is true for n equals k. In other words, a sub k is greater than or equal to 1 over the square root of k. That's our assumption. Pretend we have that as a fact. 
we want to show it's true for n equals k plus 1, or in other words, n sub k plus 1 is greater than or equal to 1 over the square root of k plus 1. If we can prove this, we can sort of backtrack and get that initial claim that our sum is greater than the harmonic series when we compare it to, and the sum would diverge. So let's look at what we want to show a sub k plus 1 is greater than or equal to 1 over the square root of k plus 1. We know what a sub k plus 1 is. That's sine of a sub k. Through our argument earlier, we had a different representation for an inequality of sine x. We saw sine x was greater than or equal to x minus x cubed over 3 factorial. So let's slip that fact into this inequality. If we can show a sub k minus a sub k cubed over 3 factorial was greater than 1 over square root of k plus 1, then that would imply our previous step, which is what we want to show. Since we finally have some a sub k's, we can actually use our induction hypothesis as it's called. We're assuming a sub k is greater than or equal to 1 over root k, so let's slip that into this inequality. Now we want to show this. 1 over root k minus 1 over root k cubed over 3 factorial is greater than 1 over square root of k plus 1. It's a bit of a mouthful and a bit clunky, but if we prove this, that would imply our previous step, which would imply the previous step, which is what we want to show. At this point, it's pretty much coming down to algebra. Let's just rewrite this inequality using properties of exponents, and then what we can do to clean this up is multiply every term by a k to the 3 halves power. k to the 3 halves over k to the 1 half, that's k. The k to the 3 halves would clear in the second term. And on the right hand side, it's just going to be looking like this. Now to get rid of those roots, let's just square both sides so those roots will clear on the right hand side. And we'll just have to distribute out the left hand side. Multiply both sides by k plus 1 and then distribute once again. What we'll see is some k cubes popping out here, but fortunately k cube on the left and the right cancel out. Moving everything to the left side so this is greater than or equal to zero, we have this clunky polynomial. Fortunately, we can clean it up a little bit by multiplying everything by 36. And hopefully you're up to date with your factoring by grouping because this does factor pretty nicely. And the solutions of this inequality are k equals 1 third and 1 eighth. Fortunately, we're only interested in k in the natural numbers, starting at 1 and greater, and thus this inequality will hold true for all k in the natural numbers. Basically, a positive times a positive is a positive, which is greater than or equal to 0. So let's see what we did here. We showed that this inequality was true for all k in the natural numbers. That implied our previous statement, which implied our previous statement, which was basically what we wanted to show, and our induction step was proven. And our comparison is complete, thus the sum of a sub n squared is greater than or equal to the sum of 1 over n, which is the harmonic series. We know this to be a divergent series, it's really a p-series with p equals 1, and the conclusion is that our series diverges. If you like these Putnam exam questions that deal with infinite series, Click the video on the screen right here. I'll see you in that one.